Today we shall embark on a new series of Dhamma talks, namely on you know, the you know, five uh, roots of, you know, the three roots of all unwholesomeness and uh, uh, those uh, three roots of all unwholesomeness consist of uh, greed, loba, and uh, you know, then loba you know, mula or loba uh, uh, to and so, you know, then as the second one we have hatred or ill will, dosa, mula or hetu. And so, you know, then as number three, you know, we have uh, ignorance, avijja, mula or avijja, hetu. Now, these so, you know, three roots of all you know, unwholesomeness uh, have uh, you know, their opposites namely in the form of you know, the three uh, roots of wholesomeness, namely aloba, non-greed, and then the root of non-hatred, adosa, and then the root of non-ignorance, uh, namely wija. Um, now, how do you know, meditators certainly experience uh, the uh, root of uh, uh, greed. Uh, well, at the beginning of a retreat, a meditator uh, has a hard time controlling his or her uh, eyes and certainly uh, will uh, want to uh, look around and when seeing some beautiful sight, uh, then the person uh, can uh, not go without uh, uh, indulging <coughs> in this beautiful uh, object. Again, when a beginning uh, meditator by uh, uh, chance hears uh, some sweet uh, sound, then the meditator cannot go uh, without uh, listening to this sweet uh, sound more and more. And the same thing uh, goes uh, for you know, a fragrant uh, smell. You know, when one comes across such a fragrant uh, smell, you know, then a beginning meditator you know, will be you know, tempted you know, to uh, enjoy it, to indulge you know, in it. The same thing goes you know, for you know, delicious food and also you know, for you know, pleasant, soothing, tactile uh, experiences. When one certainly wants, one wants to enjoy these you know, pleasant, you know, tactile you know, sensations, and certainly you know, one wants to uh, have or experience more and more of uh, you know, the same. Now, as a meditator, we you know, need to you know, understand the nature of uh, you know, this uh, um, you know, root of unwholesomeness in you know, the form of uh, greed. And doing so, our you know, mind will be able to, our mind, our you know, meditation practice as a whole, will be able to you know, develop and not being able to understand you know, this certain greed, so the unwholesome or root of unwholesomeness so, uh, in the form of greed, you know, well, you know, then you know, the mind as well as our practice you know, will not be able to you know, develop. Now, the text point out you know, that uh, um, an action undertaken while I mean, greed, lava, is certainly uh, present in you know, one's uh, stream of uh, consciousness, then uh, you know, this action uh, will have unwholesome uh, results. And you know, so greed has a way of uh, coloring our you know, consciousness and sort of influencing the ethical outcome of uh, you know, the action. 
So if first you know, we you know, want to reap wholesome results uh, you know, from our actions, then you know, we you know, you know, better you know, control you know, any kind of or, you know, control and prevent any kind of uh, the action that uh, is uh, undertaken with a greedy mind. Now, the Abhidhamma, the you know, philosophy and psychology of you know, Buddhism, you know, teaches, speaks in the context of Lava, you know, speaks of eight kinds of consciousness rooted in you know, greed. And so, you know, we have uh, a consciousness that is uh, you know, associated with uh, you know, joy and uh, you know, then associated you know, with a wrong you know, view and uh, you know, then uh, prompted and then another consciousness you know, that is associated uh, with the feeling the pleasant you know, feeling uh, with a pleasant feeling here known or referred to as uh, you know, joy Dhammanasa, the Hagata in the Pali scriptural language and uh, you know, then um, a whole you know, disassociate you know, then as again associated you know, with the wrong you know, view and certainly in the you know, in the second case uh, you know, then um, a whole, uh, unprompted and then the same thing for um, consciousness that is associated with joy and certainly at this time um, you know, with holding uh, a wrong um, or not uh, free from a you know, wrong you know, view and uh, so there's four you know, such uh, cases and so, you know, four cases associated with joy and so, you know, then uh, four cases associated with a new, with upeka uh, upeka sahagata and so, you know, this refers to the feeling tone of you know, the experience of now you know, you know, the you know, consciousness is associated with a neutral feeling. In the first uh, four cases, you know, there is uh, a pleasant uh, feeling associated to, to you know, consciousness. And then again, you know, we have uh, uh, you know, different cases, you know, two cases you know, with a mind uh, uh, associated with uh, you know, wrong you know, view and two cases with the mind uh, you know, dissociated from you know, wrong view and then uh, again you know, cases of uh, uh, the mind you know, prompted and unprompted uh, in both, uh, you know, both cases. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or prompted means uh, you know, prompted by um, you know, some, you know, let's say, uh, some other person is telling you, you know, to you know, do something um, you know, with a greedy attitude, and unprompted is uh, you know, that uh, uh, it happens uh, out of you know, your own you know, uh, wanting. Mm-hmm. No. So these are you know, the eight lava mula chitta as given in the Abhidhamma. Now the text certainly clearly states is that greed is a defilement of you know, the human mind. And what this implies is that you know, there's also an opposite, namely the, you know, the undefiled mind, the mind you know, which is not influenced you know, by you know, the impure you know, the mental, you know, mental states. And when the greed certainly is certainly present in you know, the stream of consciousness, 
then, as we will see later on, we will perform, uh, or we will not see the truth uh, as it certainly is. Now, in the Vesuvian Manga, in its 22nd certain chapter, in section 49, or paragraph, no, section 49, it says that the mental factor of certain greed of uh, lava itself is defiled. So the mental state itself is, uh, uh, is unwholesome, is, uh, um, is impure. And worse than this, this certain mental state then also defiles other states associated with it, other mental states. So it's, uh, not only is it impure itself, but uh, it also has a negative um, defining influence on other associated mental states. And so the Abhidhamma explains uh, that uh, when greed is certainly present uh, in uh, the mind, and then it uh, well, colors uh, the mind, and uh, so uh, this uh, has an influence over uh, the entire mind. Now, again, with regards uh, to Greet, uh, the same passage from the Visuddhimagga uh, states that greed is a stain in the Pali scripture language referred to as mana because it is uh, tainted and it stains uh, the other uh, mental states by its uh, presence. Now, you uh, will surely uh, be aware uh, that there are other uh, Pali uh, synonyms for uh, greed, uh, such as raga, um, namely lost, and certainly uh, then tanha, uh, craving. And the relationship between greed, loba, and uh, raga is such uh, that uh, uh, loba, greed, is uh, the more limited uh, term, whereas uh, uh, raga or uh, lust is uh, the wider uh, term. And raga uh, could uh, be translated into uh, English as impassioned uh, excitement. Now, when it comes to uh, greed and uh, greed, lover and uh, you know, craving, tanha, or literally thirst, you know, there is uh, quite an overlap. These two are uh, similar you know, terms. Now, the Buddha, you know, when speaking of greed, also you know, refers to it as an internal taint. Antara mana that defiles Satya the mind as a cloud covers Satya the sun, or uh, as an enemy. In a, here is, he also speaks of it as an enemy of Satya the mind. Amita. Mita is your friend, the prefix A is a negative marker, and so uh, uh, your enemy. And uh, it's, uh, it's being, you know, or this particular point uh, gets uh, illustrated uh, to, or compared to, to smoke uh, that is covering uh, the sun. Now, greed is also uh, referred to as a tormentor and uh, as an adversary and as an opponent. These different uh, uh, terms here make it very clear you know, that uh, greed is not something, is not a mental state, 
you know, to be underestimated. So when the you know, greed such is such you know, present in our stream of consciousness and such you know, when it increases you know, more and more, then it leads to you know, suffering. And the greater the greed, the greater will be the suffering. Now, this may not be obvious uh, you know, right away, but uh, um, if you, you know, remember the situation from you know, your you know, life you know, in, uh, up to this point, you know, where you know, you've really badly you know, wanted certain something or somebody, you know, and certainly uh, maybe not uh, uh, at obtained what you wanted, and then you, know, you uh, will probably understand uh, better. And even in you know, the meditation practice, we can you know, see for ourselves how you know, this certain uh, greed can you know, lead to you know, suffering. Now, you know, let's say we have only very few you know, days left to you know, our retreat, and so you know, we you know, may want to you know, you know, well you know, realize that you know, the Dhamma before you know, going back home. And so, you know, then, if the practice is not so, unfolding the way we're expecting it, hoping for it, then you know, uh, it's going to be what? Sukha or Dukkha? Karen, what do you think? Dukkha. Dukkha. And Karen, do you, and, and Lisa, do you agree? Uh, yes, maybe you do agree. Okay. And now, um, the text uh, further you know, speak of of you know, greed, of love, as uh, um, producing other harmful states. The Pali term for this is anatta jadana, and you know, so other, you know, once greed is there, you know, then it causes kind of a, a chain effect, and so you know, it leads to you know, the arriving of other unwholesome mental states in you know, the mind. And as Sutna uh, pointed out uh, at the outset of uh, the talk, this uh, then uh, will prevent the mind from its further uh, development. Now, when we're not meditating, we may not be interested in you know, the development of the mind. We don't. Uh, we might not even uh, understand why this should be uh, important. However, when we do meditate, you know, we realize that. Uh, you know, we want to you know, well shape the mind, we want to you know, develop it, we want to you know, form it, you know, we want it certain to grow, and certainly so in this context, you know, then uh, greed has uh, no place. Now, in the Iti Wutaka, one of you know, of one of the shorter collections of you know, discourses, it says in verse you know, 85 in the Pali you know, scriptural language, Ludo Atam Najanati, Ludo Dhammapasati. Now the meaning of this is you know, the greedy person, a greedy person fails to see what is correct and incorrect. And a greedy person fails certain to see the truth. Now, the Visuddhi Maga you know, defines you know, greed in the you know, classical you know, fourfold you know, way by you know, saying that its characteristic is grasping an object and certain its certain function is certain as Sticking just like uh, meat that uh, sticks to you know, a hot uh, frying pan um, in which you don't have too much uh, you know, oil. And you know, then it is manifested as not certainly giving up. And uh, a modern or, or you know, 
an illustration for this from the Asian context is uh, you know, that of uh, you know, a hunter catching a monkey. Now, it appears that uh, in you know, parts of Asia, you know, monkeys uh, are caught you know, by you know, taking a coconut and uh, you know, then making a hole into it and certainly putting, you know, you know, putting a banana in it, a hole and actually you know, slit. And so, you know, then the coconut gets uh, tied you know, to you know, some tree in the forest and so, you know, the hunter you know, will wait uh, uh, in hiding or will you know, you know, be in hiding you know, at a certain you know, distance. Now, sooner or later, you know, a monkey comes, sees the coconut, you know, is curious and uh, you know, finds uh, you know, this uh, you know, coconut quite interesting and then starts playing around with it and discovers uh, you know, there is something inside of it, something really precious in the form of a ripe banana. Now, the, you know, the monkey cannot uh, help but uh, you know, to you know, you know, put uh, its hand into you know, the coconut and so, you know, to and grasp you know, the banana. Now, at this point, or this is the point that uh, you know, the hunter has been waiting for, and so, you know, so the hunter comes out of uh, you know, his hiding, and so, you know, then um, you know, and goes after the monkey. Now, the monkey is so attached to you know, you know, the banana, and then so, you know, the monkey totally forgets you know, to let go of uh, you know, the banana, and so, you know, as a result of this, you know, the hunter then uh, catches uh, you know, the monkey. All the monkey you know, you know, you know, would have needed to do you know, was to simply let go, but in this situation, uh, you know, that's the last thing a monkey can think of. So, you know, this not giving up, and Indeed, you know, when we you know, very much desire something, when we long for something, when we wish for something you know, to happen, you know, then we just can't uh, give it up uh, you know, anymore, and it comes up in uh, the mind uh, over and over you know, again. And we'll do whatever you know, needs to be done in order to you know, get that uh, you know, desired uh, you know, object. Now, the proximate certain so cause you know, for you know, greed is uh, uh, not or is, is seeing enjoyment in that in you know, a certain or in objects that ultimately lead to bondage. So we see something as attractive. We think that this is going to you know, bring us or yield us. Uh, maximum uh, happiness, pleasure, and what not, and uh, yet we're not realizing uh, that uh, in fact uh, uh, this is tying us uh, to uh, uh, the cycle of uh, birth and death even more. Now, in the Itiwataka, uh, in uh, verse uh, 85, or section, uh, eight, uh, section 85, yeah, there, uh, yeah, there it says is that greed makes uh, one's uh, mind a cavern, or causes one's mind yeah, to become a cavern of darkness. And until and unless one ceases to be uh, greedy in the presence of temptation, the mind will not be free from that darkness. Now, when you think of your meditation practice, especially those who have advanced already quite a bit in the meditation, and let's say those who have reached either the fourth insight knowledge, the mature phase of the fourth insight knowledge, or 
you know, the eleventh insight knowledge of equanimity about certain information. You know, well, you know, during those certain you know, two insight knowledges, the mind tends to be pretty clear and you know, quite bright. And the reason for it, you know, this lies in you know, the relative absence of you know, you know, the unwholesome mental state or un- unwholesome, unwholesome uh, the root of unwholesomeness uh, in the form of uh, greed. Now, when we act out of uh, a greedy mind, you know, then you know, we you know, perform all sorts of things, and you know, these actions will have repercussions, they will lead to you know, you know, karmic uh, results, and uh, in the end, you know, they may lead us uh, you know, to you know, states of uh, loss. So, you know, if we perform, um, let's say, some um, terrible um, crime out of uh, a greedy you know, state of mind, you know, then indeed it may you know, lead, or this uh, you know, then you know, will lead uh, you know, to you know, being reborn in a state of uh, loss. In the Diganikaya, in the so-called Satna Das Suttara um, or Das Satna Suttara Sutta, um, there is uh, you know, there are two you know, sections where it uh, says greed always leads you know, people to decline. Hana, you know, in the Pali scripture language, whereas uh, you know, the absence of greed, so non-greed, leads to uh, their distinction. We say the Bhagya in the Pali scriptural language. If we continuously act out of certain greed, we want uh, the more and more money, we want uh, to uh, accumulate uh, the more and more you know, you know, whole estates or lands, uh, uh, buildings, vehicles, and uh, what uh, not. Yeah, then most likely we will do so yeah, without certain uh, regard for other or without consideration you know, for others' uh, uh, interests and certain uh, feelings. And in this way, we you know, will bring much harm to others as well as certain uh, to ourselves. Gradually, we will you know, be known in society as an extremely greedy you know, person and people will start uh, avoiding us. Now, along this uh, same uh, line, it says in uh, the uh, Samyutta Nikaya uh, that certain uh, greed is an obstacle and uh, it is a veil. Um, it's something that blurs our uh, vision uh, of uh, uh, the correct uh, teachings. And not uh, seeing you know, the truth, we will you know, want to accumulate more and more and uh, thus you know, and so, uh, doing so without realizing that we're also increasing you know, the suffering that we bring onto our you know, self. So the more you know, greedy we are, the more suffering you know, will you know, follow. Now, the object of uh, our greed can be just about anything. It can be our collection of butterflies, or it could be you know, maybe um, a collection of, or, or, or uh, increasing our you know, banking uh, account, 
or uh, accumulating uh, real estate or uh, wanting uh, to uh, have uh, many uh, employees and so, um, so this would be material things, material objects. But then the greed can also attach itself you know, to immaterial things, you know, such immaterial you know, objects, you know, such as certain you know, fame, you know, praise, you know, enjoyment, leadership, etc. Now, what meditators find in, in practice is uh, that um, at first, let's say some enticing object arises and so, you know, then uh, you know, greed seems to be you know, setting in and so, you know, the greed is so, you know, then, uh, increasing more and more. Now, with further practice, down, uh, further down you know, the road, a meditator you know, may find uh, you know, or make an you know, interesting discovery. Namely, greed is certainly uh, latent in the mystery of consciousness, and so it's kind of getting ready you know, to arise. And and then um, the you know, the mind is kind of looking for an object to get attached to, an object to you know, to long for, etc. And so, when a particular you know, mental state is there, it will oftentimes go after you know, the uh, you know, respective uh, objects. To explain the same thing you know, in the case of uh, you know, hatred or ill will, we may find, or, or you know, when we you know, first um, encounter you know, ill will in our meditation practice, then we tend to you know, find fault with the, you know, the object. So we think it's because of you know, such and such a condition, or you know, such and such a person, or you know, such and such a site, etc., you know, that ill will has arisen in you know, the mind. But later on, you know, we may you know, discover uh, that uh, the mental state of ill will is latent in the stream of consciousness. It's, let's say, it's getting active, and so, um, and then it's actually looking for some object you know, to you know, some you know, displeasing object so you know, that the mind you know, then can uh, explode. Now, if one can catch you know, the uh, ill will uh, as explained in you know, you know, the second case or you know, the greed also in the second case, you know, then of course you know, it means that you know, one can uh, well, be mindful of it and you know, then, uh, recognize what is going on and then uh, quickly let go of it. Now, our increasing greed may uh, or leads to an increasing battle in life. Now, at the time of the Buddha, you know, there you know, was a person who approached the Buddha in, in this regard and asked for uh, advice. And the Buddha confirmed that indeed more greed leads to you know, a greater battle um, in life. And as recommended in, or as uh, 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 mentioned in the Sanyutta Nikaya, New Volume 1, New Section 16, it is the cutting off of desire which should, you know, desire for enjoyment which will contribute you know, to you know, going through life with great ease. So 
whether we will have a smooth life, smooth and easy life, or you know, a life you know, full of you know, battles, you know, will depend greatly on you know, whether you know, we hold on to greed or you know, learn to let go of it. Now, from a practical meditation point of view, it can be said you know, that you know, the more you know, we practice, the more you know, the contentment we find within ourselves, the sense of you know, happiness arises, of inner you know, satisfaction, of you know, peace, calmness, you know, balance of mind, sharpness of mind, etc., etc. And with this, we realize that we need what? Many external things or not? Hmm? Not many. And so we get by you know, with less and so less. So whether we you know, possess external you know, or material things, it doesn't really matter. Now, again, there's a reference uh, you know, in you know, the text, so this time from the Jataka, you know, where it suddenly you know, says that certain you know, greed also is a root cause for you know, the lawlessness among the human you know, beings. So when greed is suddenly you know, present you know, in an excessive you know, way, you know, then you know, we will you know, be tempted to do you know, things that uh, you know, or you know, to you know, transgress uh, you know, the law and uh, you know, um, in particular to take uh, you know, property um, that is uh, not uh, ours. In the Mahadoka Kanda the Sutta of uh, you know, the, the Majjhima Nikaya, you know, there is a uh, you know, reference you know, to uh, the greed you know, being uh, the cause of uh, um, of quarrels, of uh, even of uh, battles, and so uh, serious consequences or, or greed can uh, lead to uh, serious consequences. Now, this is not uh, all uh, yet uh, you know, when it comes to you know, the perils or dangers of but the greed and the you know, prime cause of oppression and uh, exploitation of man by man comes certainly uh, in the form of uh, greed and certainly uh, this in uh, turn uh, then uh, le- may lead to, to uh, one's own uh, to social and to economic ruin among uh, human uh, beings. Now, before going, uh, uh, to give you one more uh, quote something from you know, the Dhammapada, there are Dhammapada verse 186 says that the following, namely 86 and 87, not by a shower of coins can sensual desires be saturated. Sensual desires give little pleasure and are fraught with evil consequences, dukkha, as certainly we have certainly seen. Knowing this, the wise man or woman who is uh, you know, the disciple of the Buddha does not find a delight even in the pleasures of the devas, you know, but rejoices in the cessation of craving, namely Nibbana. Now, when one doesn't meditate, one will you know, probably not understand uh, you know, this, uh, these two you know, Dhammapada you know, verses. But in the course of the meditation practice, 
one realizes the true na nature of Satya Green <coughs> and Satya Din, one will want to go beyond Satya Green and Satya Din. Indeed, you know, one uh, realizes that Satya the non occurrence of objects, the non grasping of uh, objects, is Satya the ideal you know, state so to be in. Now, another you know, reference uh, is, or not another yeah, reference to Negri, you know, comes in the Dhammapada verse 215, you know, where it says, Gama to Jayati Soko, Gama to Jayati Bayam, Gama to Vipamuta Sat, Nati Soko Kuto Bayam. Let lust beget sorrow, lust beget fear. For him or her who is free from lust, there is no sorrow. How can there be fear for him or her? Now, before going into the different ways of uh, uh, overcoming greed, let us uh, uh, see um, the many different you know, synonyms and uh, descriptive you know, you know, whole, um, descriptive terms they give in you know, the Dhamma Sangani you know, section or paragraph 1065 for greed and this section is really long it contains just a, an, an amazing number of certain forms of but in greed. Now, before we go into you know, this, um, we can, when we look at you know, the various expressions of um, expressions or manifestations of greed, you know, we can um, uh, categorize the greed into extremely gross forms of greed, leading to you know, very gross certain uh, action and so leading to you know, you know, very gross uh, uh, results. And then we have uh, greed and that is certainly uh, somewhat uh, more refined and certainly uh, that will not lead you know, to you know, a birth or taking rebirth in a state of loss. So you know, to the first category you, know, you can count any kind of action that uh, arises out of an extreme form of greed, which uh, you know, then leads to maybe um, or, or an action such as uh, uh, taking the life out of certain greed, which uh, you know, then you know, will obviously lead to you know, rebirth in a state of uh, loss. Now, you know, obviously, not all forms of greed are as coarse uh, as uh, this. And uh, so there are you know, re more refined forms of greed around, and so, uh, such as so that maybe um, desiring you know, uh, something without so, you know, going or taking this desire to uh, extreme uh, you know, forms or actions. And then, so um, what could count under this so, you know, would certain be a craving you know, for you know, certain um, for, for delicious food enjoying this or you know, a craving you know, for you know, some you know, tactile pleasant tactile experiences etc now <coughs> then we have the more you know, refined certain well then we have you know, the forms of sensuous forms of you know, greed and uh, uh, like you know, greed you know, for you know, longing for another you know, person uh, etc and apart from this there you know, are even more refined forms of uh, greed such as for um, an 
fine material existence, taking a fine material existence, like agreed for you know, certain you know, jhanic uh, experiences, be they fine material or you know, immaterial, or you know, to take it even further, you know, agreed for non-existence. And these different grades of greed you know, will be overcome through you know, the attainment of uh, you know, the uh, you know, four levels of enlightenment. So, with the first level of enlightenment, obviously, uh, the any kind of uh, action you know, that or any kind of greed that leads to you know, a rebirth, taking a rebirth in a state of loss, you know, this will be you know, cut off. So with stream entry, you know, those forms of you know, greed you know, will go. However, other forms of greed will still remain. And with the attainment of the you know, second you know, level of enlightenment, you know, namely you know, one's return, um, the greed will be you know, further attenuated, further you know, weakened, but not cut off yet. It is with the third you know, level of enlightenment, namely anagami you know, hood, you know, that you know, one you know, cuts off you know, the sensuous certain you know, greed. And it is sensuous material you know, greed. And it is with you know, the attainment of the last level of enlightenment, arahata, you know, uh, Maga and Pala, or Maga, and that uh, uh, one uh, and cuts off the remaining immaterial you know, or you know, immaterial forms of uh, in, fine material and immaterial forms of uh, in greed. Now, in uh, the Dhamma Sankani, it says. Uh, there um, of those uh, what is of those certain uh, meritorious root causes um, what is greed uh, there are attachment strong attachment and then compliance delight intense delight strong attachment of the mind longing infatuation being completely overwhelmed by greed you know, then greed itself, wanting everything clean, then desire, seduction, leading beings to ills and sufferings of existences, causing beings to arise in the round of rebirths, binding beings to successive existences, the net of sensual objects, rapid current of suffering, poisonous force, a rope binding beings you know, to worthless endeavors, pervading desire for sense objects, endeavoring to attain sense objects, a pleasant companion in every existence, hankering after leading to existences, a jungle, a thick jungle, intimate relationship, lust, favorable regard, entanglement in various sense objects. Craving for sense objects, having craving, being full of craving, craving for attractive objects, craving for pleasant sound, for pleasant odor, craving for pleasant taste, tangible objects, for gain, craving for wealth, you know, for offspring, craving for life. And so even this one, craving for life, is uh, interesting because it's a very um, deeply instilled uh, craving in uh, the mind asserting one's right, repeatedly asserting one's right, strongly asserting one's right, assertion of one's right, making an assertion of one's right, assertiveness of one's right, excessive greed for sense objects, having excessive greed for sense objects, being full of excessive greed for you know, sense objects, being excited you know, with desire like a dog wagging its tail, longing for pleasant objects, passion for improper objects, and then inordinate greed, 
liking an object, having a liking for an object, longing for an object, a fondness for an object, intense longing for an object. And then, craving for sense pleasures, craving for existence, craving for non-existence, craving for existence in the fine material sphere, craving for existence in the non-material sphere, craving for cessation of existence, craving for visible object, craving for sound, odor, taste, tangible object, and for mind object. Then, there's the whirlpool of existences, the yoke of existences, the bond, or the clinging, obstruction, near to meritorious dhamma, hindrance, conceding the true dhamma, binding you know, beings to ills and sufferings of existence, impurities, you know, defilements that have not been completely dispelled, upsurge of greed, and then entwining like a creeper, desiring all kinds of objects, root cause of ills and sufferings, and some, I think, source of ills, snare of Mara, fish hook of Mara, domain of Mara, river of craving, and then ocean of craving, covetousness, greed, and something then the root of root cause of demeritoriousness. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> it seems like a pretty complete uh, at least. Yeah, sometimes when preparing Dhamma talks, I'm making the new discoveries, and this one, yeah, yeah, this section here was a new yeah, discovery. I've never seen this before, and so, yeah, so there's the Greek can take so many different uh, new forms, and so, yeah, so for us that uh, are on uh, retreat to yeah, they, uh, discover these uh, many you know, you know, subtle you know, paths, you know, paths and sub-paths you know, that you know, greed is you know, taking. Now, um, how do we curb and remove the unwholesome root of greed? Uh, well, you know, one way of doing so would be you know, by you know, way of right, wise reflection and, or you know, consideration you know, such as moderation in eating. When we take food, then we don't take food out of greed uh, in order to you know, fill our stomach or you know, to you know, gain a pleasant appearance or attractive appearance, but rather you know, we take food uh, to you know, maintain the strength of this body and you know, thus to you know, carry out our meditation practice. Now, with sila, with morality, we you know, curb the you know, physical and verbal manifestations of greed, and thus indirectly you know, we weaken you know, the greed. So, if we keep doing this, and then over time, our the impulse to you know, indulge in you know, similar uh, activities will gradually you know, decrease. It doesn't mean that the greed uh, you know, will you know, cease altogether in the stream of consciousness, but at least uh, uh, it will weaken a little bit. It will, um, there will be kind of like a, a bar there. Now, as certainly you, you know, will you know, surely know, and greed is also you know, one of the hindrances there. It is known as the Kama Chanda Nivarana, so you know, the hindrance of sense, that you know, desire, and uh, the way to deal with it is uh, you know, you know, to suppress it through you know, the concentration and uh, also you know, making use of uh, you know, mindfulness and uh, effort. Now, guarding the same stores, Indriya, Samara, Sila is a wonderful way of uh, um, preventing greed from arising in uh, you know, the stream of consciousness in the first place. Now, let's say there is some you know, attractive, enticing uh, object coming along in the form of a attractive young man or an attractive young woman, if we don't even look at this object, 
and that we see maybe at the most his or her shoes, then how can greed arise? But uh, if we say, well, never mind uh, with our uh, mindfulness and uh, forget uh, our restraint of the senses and uh, let me uh, explore this attractive object and then we indulge in it, and then naturally you know, the you know, greed you know, will be, or the arising of greed you know, will be favored, it you know, will be encouraged. Now, the abandoning of greed you know, happens uh, not all at once, as outlined certain a few moments ago, but this is a gradual process. So, uh, with the you know, anchor who, by attaining stream entry, you know, the coarsest forms of greed go, and then with the successive uh, attainments, uh, more and more refined forms of greed uh, uh, will be abandoned. And now, out of uh, greed, we will want to uh, possess uh, more and more, and uh, when greed is present, uh, then our uh, willingness to give uh, will be uh, very poor. So one way of curbing uh, the greed is uh, by intentionally uh, developing this quality or this practice of partner generosity, of giving to you know, those who are in need and uh, sharing you know, what we have in excess in terms of material wealth, in terms of immaterial you know, wealth. The, you know, you know, these are, you know, or these could be uh, our skills. So these are different you know, ways of uh, you know, dealing you know, with uh, greed. Now, in the Samyutta Nikaya, yeah, there's a section yeah, that says yeah, that the enlightenment factor of uh, mindfulness, Sati Sambhajanga, is especially uh, useful in uh, dealing uh, with greed. So this then leads uh, uh, to uh, Satipatthana practice, and so uh, indeed mindful among the uh, different you know, ways of dealing with uh, you know, the hindrance of sense desire, you know, the, um, you know, the Satipatthana of the Sutta, you know, uh, this, uh, the commentary to the Satipatthana of the Sutta you know, gives uh, you know, the following. Namely, mindfulness is uh, you know, the first and foremost uh, the way to deal you know, with sense desire or with greed in general. And so apart you know, from this, um, the commentary you know, mentions learning how to meditate on impure objects. So basically, uh, this is you know, the contemplation on um, unwholesome things, asuba bhavana, and uh, uh, this point doesn't uh, yet mean that one uh, practices uh, asuba, but just learns how to uh, do it. The next step then uh, consists in uh, actually uh, doing asuba kamatana, uh, namely uh, practicing um, on uh, the foulness of uh, the body, such as you know, the, the, contemplating on a bloated body, on a festering body, on a cut up body, on a scattered body, a hacked and uh, scattered body, body, a bleeding body, worm infested body, and certainly you know, then a skeleton. Now, when you know, one does so, you know, this kind of you know, the contemplation, and then you know, it uh, you know, does you know, very much help you know, to drive you know, the greed or the sense desire uh, away. Now, guarding the sense stores, we've mentioned already, 
and then moderation in eating of food that we've mentioned already and certainly the commentary you know, further regrets noble friendship and so, um, so if you happen to have um, an advanced uh, meditator and uh, your friend a person uh, who has uh, uprooted already plenty of mental defilement and uh, strongly weakened uh, the greed or even um, uh, uprooted uh, you know, the sensuous part of you know, the greed sensuous greed now then you know, such a friend you know, will you know, display non-greed uh, in uh, many uh, different uh, situations in life where other people you know, would uh, display you know, a greedy you know, behavior. This thing you know, will be very inspiring and you know, this thing you know, will you know, may lead you to emulate this kind of behavior and you know, that you know, it will help to weaken you know, the greed. Now, uh, listening to a suitable discourse, or a discourse on you know, the uh, hindrances, or a discourse on you know, the three roots of all unwholesomeness, etc., these uh, might be helpful you know, to uh, see the greed in the right certain perspective, and certainly uh, then uh, to tackle it uh, whenever it arises in. Uh, the stream of consciousness. Now, this certainly then, oh no, in, mm, the nourishing of sensual desire and certainly the denourishing of certainly sensual desire would be um, also applies. Namely, knowing that uh, if we you know, don't certainly uh, restrain our senses and uh, you know, we keep you know, indulging in objects that you know, then, uh, easily you know, lead to the arising of uh, greed, then obviously more and more greed will arise. But if we apply um, a whole wise attention and uh, we you know, frequently you know, give wise attention to impure you know, objects, you know, then this will help to you know, decrease the sensual you know, desire. Now, this then you know, brings us to you know, the end of our you know, discourse today. Let me conclude you know, by you know, wishing may uh, all of you understand, fully understand certainly you know, the many you know, dangers you know, that certainly come along uh, with certain greed and indulging in you know, the mental state of greed and so even strengthening it and so, uh, may uh, this also help you, you know, to um, you know, then uh, apply the mindfulness and so on all those uh, other methods that they mention in order to curb the greed whenever it rises, you know, to weaken it you know, whenever it arises, and so, you know, then eventually, you know, through you know, the you know, four, through the attainment of the you know, four levels uh, of uh, enlightenment in a successive uh, you know, series over you know, many years, may you, you know, may we all be able you know, to. Uh, fully uproot certain greed from our stream of uh, consciousness. And this is it for now. Um.